chronological resumes, by virtue of their name, is something that's in chronological order. So Christy, explain to me just a little bit more for the audience what they would use that for and who would use it. Okay, so and when we say chronological resume, we actually mean reverse chronological resume. You always start with your most recent experience first. It's definitely appropriate for people that are wanting to stay in their field, make the next progression maybe to a higher level or a lateral move. Um, it is the preferred resume format of most recruiters and hiring managers. Um, you know, they're familiar with it. They know kind of what they're looking at. They, it's easy to read. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what it is. I still recommend, you know, kind of using the um, – professional summary first, the experience, and then the education in a chronological resume, followed by any, like, you know, skills or certifications, that type of thing. Let's start taking a look at the uh, examples that we have here. And this particular example was submitted by Christy for us to review. And it is a two-page resume. So, Christy, do you want to talk about this? really quickly here? Sure. So you can see here, we instead of using a job objective, we just put a title on the resume for an HR manager. We highlighted um, at the top the summary of qualifications. You know, so this is where it's a little different, and you wouldn't have this if you just lead into the experience. You know, we're telling the people up front that are reviewing it that he has over um, – you know, seven years of experience guiding companies in developing and implementing HR policies and procedures, including, and then kind of those skill sets that would be important for an HR manager to have. Um, and then get into, you know, some of the, the skills that make him a good HR manager. He has strength in adapting quickly and decisively to meet the needs of the organization, um, a history of creating and improving HR products, or procedures, I'm sorry, it's kind of small on here. And, you know, so we're trying to say, okay, this is what you're going to get, and this is what's in it for you. That's why a summary of qualifications is different from an objective. An objective statement, is, especially in the past, used to be what's in it for me, the employee, or the candidate, and this is, like, what's in it for you, the value I can bring to your company. Then we go down and, you know, go through his work experience in more detail, showing his progressions. Um, you know, and you can see the numbers, like, you know, 7 to 10 under the first um, – position kind of grabs your attention, you say, okay, what about that? Recruited and hired employees. So, this resume, um, and this is, you always have challenges in resume, and you always have things you're trying to address. You might notice, and it might seem a little strange, it did, you know, when we first talked about it, there's no city and state listed on where he worked. That could be a red flag for people, but we thought that um, the bigger red flag would be that each of these positions was like in a different city and state. So they might view him as being a job hopper, um, you know, and wonder if in his next position he's going to stay put, um, even though, you know, so that is something that um, we consciously made a decision not to include the city and state. Um, he is out. He just he was his last position was in Texas. He wants to move to New York, so he moved to New York, and he has already gotten several interviews based on this resume, and is very happy with it. Very good. I'm going to move on quickly now to the next slide, which is from Craig, and and the then the following slide is two other versions of this particular one. So Craig, do you want to explain what this one does? Yes, I, I kept my uh, my samples very simple, uh, and this is a this is the most basic simple format. And believe it or not, it's the same format that that we just reviewed, uh, but it's in a simple one page uh, format. It, you know, it's just mentioned that uh, she left off the, the the cities, the locations of the jobs that uh, that the person worked, but also we're seeing more and more now that people are leaving off the addresses of where they live. Uh, because if they're applying for a job that's an hour away from where they live and they're willing to drive that hour, they don't want the hiring manager to make the decision for them and throw them out of consideration because they think they're too far away. Um, 
and other people think it's just personal information that does, isn't needed right now. But so you, you have clearly the person's name and how to contact them with both phone number and email. Um, and then a brief objective. If you have an objective and it's more than one line long, it's, it's too long. So clearly it says customer service management. And then the most recent job first. And this shows how to lay it out if you've had more than one position within the same company. Then list the entire time you were with that company first, 2000 to present, and then break it down and how you, you, you can see um, in most recent first, of course, but you can see the, how the person is advanced through the company. degree from U of I, but they didn't say when, uh, so they didn't date themselves, but then showed more recent junior college training, took a couple classes in, in, in uh, office technology to show that they're current, then a quick listing of skills and, and finish it off with references. That line of references available on request is sort of optional. In this case, it filled out the page, but you don't have to have it, but you should have a separate sheet of references that you keep with you and, you're, and you can give to somebody at a moment's notice, but you don't hand it out right away. Now, the I have next one. two, I'm sorry, unless you want to comment one. on this one, I was going to roll into the next two resumes. Um, they, we had a challenge with that. Um, they're, they're going to be further on in the presentation. Um, but I have a question for, supposing that this person actually worked for the same company for 15 years and, is, and maybe has been laid off, and their other previous job was, you know, five years before that. So they have two jobs in 20 years. And I know that most people say that you're not supposed to put more than 15 years of experience on your resume. And, how do you deal with that? Well, if you don't want to put the dates down to show that it went out, out to 20 years before, you could just say additional experience includes and then describe what the work was or what the job skills were that, that you did that you, you that you used there. Okay. All right. Let's um move on. I think these are Chronological still, right? Mm -hmm. The page that we have here. I, and these are from you, Craig? Are, is this the Howard Anderson, Robert Jones? Yeah. Uh, yes. OK, great. Because um, I'm not always advancing in real time. Um, keep in mind, these And, and this, you've, we're now advancing from a basic resume to a much better resume in that this, the person no longer just says what they did in their job. They describe how well they did it. And any time you can show, uh, you can quantify how well you did your job with numbers, particularly if they have a dollar sign or a percent sign with them, then those numbers really jump off the page and really say something about the person. And, and the first one, the, the guy's a route driver for, he, he's, a, he's a beer salesman. And, but you look at it and say, darn, this guy did a good job of it. Um, yes. So he's quantifying how well he did his job, how good of a salesman and how good of a, a worker he is. Now, and the second one does the same thing, just as a little different format. Now, both of these are for salespeople. And you say, well, okay, I'm not a salesperson. But you can do it with other jobs. You're a, uh, if you're a production supervisor, you can say how you've increased uh, efficiency on your production line how you improve cycle times, how you reduce inventory. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. If you're a, an accountant, you can say how you've saved money. Or if you're in purchasing, you can say how you've saved money. And so there's a lot of different jobs where you can quantify what you're doing. Um, one thing I want to mention on the bottom of the first, the Howard Anderson one, he lists activities. And that's where you get into a tricky section to say, well, 
so what? You know, why do I care if he belonged to the American Legion of the Moose Lodge? His reasoning was that those are examples of his customers, and he wanted to show how not only does he sell to them, he's involved with them. No, good point. Good point. We have a question from the audience about, should you put your college education in your resume if you did not earn a degree? Oh, yes. Sure. Just uh, don't. Uh, Good. But just don't claim a degree. Good. I agree. Okay, that's our section on chronological.